for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. afternoon um whatever time of the day it is when you're watching this at the moment it's just coming up to lunchtime on saturday morning so i've had a really nice relaxing morning preparing for my second podcast um and i can't believe that it's already four weeks since i put up my first podcast on youtube and it was welcomed by so many people thank you so much everyone who commented on it and who liked it and who subscribed it's actually so um, so lovely to feel like I'm interacting with people all over the world and um, I suppose in a way contributing something to all of the podcasts that are out there on the internet that I've enjoyed so much over the last I'd say three years since I started knitting so thank you everybody it's really appreciated um, thank you for all the lovely comments um, yeah so it's a Saturday morning and I have been preparing to show you a couple of things that I'm doing, some works in progress, some finished objects, and, um, and maybe a little bit of knit and chat at the end. Um, oh yeah, just to remind you who I am, my name is Anya, and um, I'm Freach Knits on Ravelry. I've set up a Ravelry account actually since the last time I was talking to you. And I'm Freach Knits on, um, sorry, not a Ravelry account, Instagram. So I'm Freya Knits on Ravelry, but I've set up an Instagram account um, so you can see my progress there on the works that I'm doing, and that's at Freya Knits. Um, you might be wondering where the word Freya comes from, and um, that's the Irish word for uh, heather. So I live in the west of Ireland, near Croke Patrick, um, so near um, a mountainous region of the west of the country and there's heather everywhere there are actually wildflowers of all sorts everywhere and this time of the year we're right at the, at the end of summer um and there is just an abundance of wild growth and it's so lovely to see we've got quite we've been having quite a warm summer but very wet um it's the august bank holiday weekend now which is uh yeah the last last real holiday of the summer um our last public holiday and that is uh it's raining outside so what can you do but look it's lovely it's just beautiful here uh really warm really atmospheric with all the rain and really beautiful with hedgerows laden with gorgeous flowers um yeah so one of the things i wanted to talk to you about today apart from the knitting we'll get on to the knitting in a minute and you can skip ahead if you're not interested in this bit but i thought you might be interested in what I'm drinking today so instead of the coffee that I had the last time I do love my coffee but my milk was off this morning so that happens in the summertime um so I couldn't have a milky coffee so instead I'm having a um I don't know if you can see this you can just about see it there it is a cup of tea that I have made from meadow sweet and this is meadow sweet here so it's absolutely beautiful stuff. It has the most amazing scent. Um, you can tell from the leaves what it looks like. There we are. There are the leaves. That's a beautiful, beautiful plant. That's how you'll recognize it. And it's growing in abundance everywhere. I'm gonna smell it. It's absolutely beautiful. It sort of has a smell of uh, sort of honey and um, almond and vanilla. It's just most gorgeous scent. And this is a. Well, I've been reading up on my wild plants, 
Review of the Book, Ireland's Wild Plants by Neil McCutcher. And it gives not just uh, information on the actual plants and flowers, but it gives you information on the uh, folklore associated with them, the Irish folklore, which for me is fascinating. Um, and it's all of this knowledge that I think we've lost and I think we really should be trying to get back to again uh, because it has so much to offer us. Um, so this cup of tea is, uh, I could be using it as a cure for a cold or a fever because this stuff, Meadowsweet, contains salicylate, which is um, the active ingredient in aspirin. So <laughs> it's like a... It's like a medicine, but it's also just so full of perfume, um, so lovely to drink. Um, and um, there's another lovely connection with my name, which I only realised when I read the book. Uh, and apparently, according to Irish folklore, it was the goddess Anya who gave Meadowsweet its scent. So, you know, what's not to like about it? Uh, it's a really nice thing to find out. Um, my name sometimes is translated into English as Anne or Anna, but actually it's an ancient Irish name. Like a lot of uh, a lot of our names, sometimes they're they're translated or they seem to be translations of of a Christian saint's name. But um, but the Celtic uh, culture and tradition and these names and the language go much farther back than all of that. So. Um, yeah, so it's lovely to know that my name is associated with Meadowsweet. Um, another interesting little fact about the plant is that the name Meadowsweet has nothing to do with meadow at all. It's actually to do with mead. So it was used to sweeten mead, which is the honey beer, the honey drink. Um, it was also used to sweeten beer. It was spread on floors uh, in people's houses. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth I even had Meadowsweet strewn on the floor along with rushes. And that's where its Irish name comes from. So the Irish name for Meadowsweet is um, um, Aragad Luchra. So Aragad is silver and Luchra means rushes. So silver rushes. Um, and that thought come from the fact that it was spread on the floor of, of houses to give, it, give them a scent, a beautiful scent. So this flower is between May and September. So we're right in the middle of it at the moment. And we're, uh, I'm surrounded by it here. I'm very lucky. So I'm just going to take a nice little drink of this. Mm, it's very good. Okay, so um, that's really the, uh, the way this morning is going. Absolutely lovely to be able to talk to you again and tell you about my knitting. So to begin, what am I wearing? So I'm wearing a, um, a design by um, Tammy Gore for Madeleine Tosh. So this is called Cedarbrook. It's only a recent design. And as soon as I saw it, I just thought, oh, I have to knit it. I love colour work, as you'll find out. A lot of the stuff I'm going to talk to you about today contains colour work. So the, um, the sweater is slightly too big, as you can see. I'm going to stand up so you can see it better. Um, and I'm going to have to pause there actually because my battery, my computer is not plugged in. So I'm just going to pause. Okay, so um, I'm filming from a different location in the house this week. So I'm in the kitchen where the light is better. And I've just plugged in to a new source of power. My laptop was going to, to go on me. So I'm going to stand up so we can see this. So, um, I absolutely love the shape of the sweater, I love the colour work, um, I love everything about it. I knit it in a um, what's known as Tibetan DK, Chester DK Tibetan, uh, which has a lot of yak in it. So the 60% superwash merino wool, there's 20% silk and 20% yak. Um, and I think because of the yak, um, 
it's uh, it grew a little bit and obviously in merino as well um it grew more than i was expecting so it's a little bit oversized but i love it um the sleeve separation is quite low down uh, as you can see here so it's got a lovely uh sort of swan showy almost feel to it which i really like the only thing is i can't wear it with uh, a coat over me over the top of it um so in the winter time it's not great and i thought oh my goodness this is a heavy sweater it's yak it's merino i'm not going to be able to wear it in the winter but actually i found that it's great during the summer in ireland because so it's, you know it's not warm here and uh which is really nice i really appreciate the fact that we live in a cool climate um yeah so i can wear it out i don't have to wear a jacket over it i can just it can just be my top layer in the summertime so i've been really enjoying that and i love wearing it with a uh, pairing it with a uh, linen top as you can see that i've got on me today is a linen a lovely linen long linen shirt so uh, yeah so i like it so that's my uh that's what i'm wearing um then for, in terms of finished objects i have nothing finished since the last time that i was talking to you but I do have some finished objects from the past, which I thought, well, why not talk about those? Because they're so interesting. Um, I've got two shawls to show you. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at my notes, make sure that I've got the correct order here. Yes. Yeah. So um, we're going to look at the first shawl here in my pile over here. And this is called the Shetland Shawl by a designer. Um, Maria Dahan. Uh, I'm not sure where she's from. Actually, I must check that out for you and put it in the notes below. Um, her company is called Trollenwool or Trollenwool, and um, she designed this beautiful uh, shawl. So you can see that it has uh, lighthouses, the sky, birds, sheep. It's got um, meadows. Cottages, stone cottages, you know, sheep uh, again, <laughs> and uh, Shetland ponies. Those brown things are actually Shetland ponies, and they're absolutely gorgeous. And then it's got meadows full of wildflowers. So, you know, Shetland is a beautiful island, um, you know, north of Scotland, and actually probably not that different mm. from our climate here. So the these flowers on the edge. <laughs> are a modification that I made to the pattern. So, um, yeah, you can see them there. I added those in, I designed them myself. I designed the color work for them myself um, because I didn't like the edging that was on the shawl, which I'm gonna to show to you now. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my, this was the first thing that I knit that I was talking to you about in the last podcast. So I knit this, uh, really knowing absolutely nothing about colour work and just look at how well it turns out. And really that's testament to the materials that I was using. This is all Shetland, um, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. Um, you know, it's just perfect for colour work. It's absolutely beautiful. But when you look at the back of it, you can really see that I was a complete amateur. I didn't know what I was doing because my floats aren't captured. They're all, they're not, uh, they're not hooked in. These are extremely long floats running across the back of the lighthouses. So you can see that I really didn't know what I was doing until somebody suggested looking up YouTube videos to see, well, how do I capture my floats? How do I deal with them? What are they even called? I didn't know what they were called at the time. So YouTube has just taught me how to knit in the last couple of years, um, you know, from a basic understanding of knitting that I got when I was at school, which I was so thankful for that I had the basics. Um, and then all of the other techniques just came for looking at YouTube videos. So this is, yeah, it's a beautiful shawl. I never wear it, obviously. It's almost like too good to wear or I can't think of an occasion I might wear it for, but I do use it in my uh, living room to cover the sofas. And if anybody's cold in the winter, they can pick down a shawl and they can take it and cover themselves with it. Um, so this came from my train journey that I was talking to you about in the first episode of this podcast. Um, so what really got me back into knitting was when I saw this um, so this was the 
main article. It was a pull, eight page pull out in the Knitter magazine um, that I just happened to stumble across on that particular day on a train journey, stopping off, tra changing trains in Dublin to come, uh, coming three hours from Cork, changing at Dublin and another three hours to the West of Ireland. So six hour train journey and I had uh, this to inspire me. So as soon as I got home, I ordered the wool. Uh, so it's all Jamieson's of Shetland. And I have somebody here to show you that I have picked out, if I can find it. Uh, it's Jamieson's of Shetland Spindrift. So that's it there. Um, unfortunately, the light here is actually not really showing this terribly well, but that's it there. Okay. All right, so that's shawl number one. So when I had finished knitting that, so just about the wool actually, it's a, it's, it's a fingering weight. So 100% wool, Shetland wool, absolutely beautiful, really warm, perfect for photo work. Um, so then I found out about more about the designer because I just thought, wow, I love this shawl. She must have other things that are really good. So. And I came across this shawl here and this book, this beautiful book. And it is Holland Brian by Maria Pan. And this particular shawl is called the Oland Shawl. Uh, this was an absolute pleasure to knit. Very similar to the Shetland shawl. It depicts um, the local architecture on Ulland, the red, the red buildings, the red vernacular buildings, the sheep, the flowers, the wildflowers, the sea, the windmills. Um, you know, it's just a beautiful piece of work. It's a, these are really works of art, these, these designs, such talented designers. So the, the pattern for that, um, it's only available in Ulland Bryan, or it's also I, I ordered the kit online from uh, Old Centrum, sorry, from Troll and Wool. Troll and Wool is, is Maria DeHaan's website. So, um, but the, the actual wool itself is Old Centrum Supply. Um, that's it there. If I can get it to where you can see it. Old Centrum. Uh, oh, there we go. So it's 100% Swedish wool, two ply, uh, yeah, 100%. So this the story of this company is really interesting. I went online this morning to remind myself why this wool is so beautiful. It's it comes from um, Gotland sheep um, in Sweden. I'm I'm sure from all over Sweden. I, I'm not entirely sure where from. I think Uland particularly, but um, it is. So Gotland uh, has this, this this breed of sheep has a really beautiful shiny almost wool, um, and the feel of this wool it's so durable, uh, it's so uh, it's such a pleasure to knit with, and the company was set up in 1998 um, by Anne Linderhjem I think is how you pronounce her name and. It's a small company that collected, she started collecting local wool when she realized that it was being thrown out or burnt um, by the farmers because they couldn't, they couldn't get any, any, um, they couldn't sell it, they couldn't get any money for it. So, um, and it's a very similar situation in Ireland at the moment. We really don't have a, um, we don't have a milling industry, all, any, any wool that is sourced here has to be sent away to be milled and then brought back again. So there's a lot of sort of um, miles uh, carbon footprint in that. Um, it's so wonderful to think that somebody has already done this. And I know that there's such a big knitting tradition in that part of the world, in Scandinavia, that, that, that there was a market for it. We don't have the same knitting tradition here in Ireland. Um, it's not as big now. It might have been in the past. I know Aaron knitting is, tradi is a traditional knitting type here, but it's certainly nothing like um, the, the Scandinavians, the Swedes, the uh, Swedish, the Norwegians, Danish, um, 
you know, it's such a big tradition there. So maybe something like that might happen here eventually, where uh, the wool from the sheep that are everywhere in this part of the country, we have sheep everywhere, they're raised for their meat mainly, and um, not for the wool. But hopefully that change. Anyway, it's a really inspiring company. Um, I love the wool, and I'm going to show you the, the shawl now, the finished object. So this is this is Maria de Han's other shawl, um, Ul and Brian or Ul and, Ul and shawl. So they're the red sheds, our red uh, buildings, houses, um, farmhouses, and these are the sheep. And then you've got. Beautiful flowers, wildflowers, and uh, that's it. Beautiful, beautiful colours. So the background colours, this was a variegated scheme that um, yeah, just provides this sort of shading fade across the whole thing. Then you've got uh, the windmills at the top, the beaches, and the, uh, the sky. I mean, all these different shades of blue the sky and then around the edge we have fish for the sea because it's an island uh, so yeah you even got the stone walls here these are the stone walls right here so that is another uh, piece that stays lives in my living room on the back of the couch um, yeah or even sometimes at the foot of my bed actually in the winter time I actually have that one on the foot of my bed and I absolutely adore the colours of it I love it and I love the feel of that wool. After it's quite sort of rustic. So when you're knitting with it, it's rough enough. But when you wash it, it just becomes so soft and silky. It's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful for jumpers. I have a jumper, a brown jumper in in that wool in uh, old Centrum's two ply. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. Ordering online, small company, really sustainable, local wool, um, beautiful, beautiful colours. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, okay, so works in progress then. Um, last week you saw that I was working on the turntable pullover by um, our very own Irish designer, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Um, Albina, Albina McLaughlin. And this is knit in this beautiful, this was the one that I was showing you in my last podcast. And at that stage, um, yeah, so it's knit up in a merino singles from Life in the Long Grass. Life in the Long Grass, another one of my absolutely all-time favourite yarns. Uh, the colourways are absolutely stunning. Such good value when you buy online from her own website, um, where there's a 10% discount. She's not paying me. I'm not getting any any uh, anything for. I'm not promoting her, but it's just I love her stuff, and I really want people to be able to to, to use it. So it's a really reasonable wool. Ten percent if you buy a sweater quantity, so th more than three seams. Ten uh, percent off. Um, yeah, I finished the. I bound off, so I did a stretchy bind off, uh, which is Jenny's amazing new stretchy bind off, uh, which works really well. Took a long time to do it, a bit faffy, but you know, it's really good, works well. Uh, how far have I got? I still haven't finished the second, haven't started the second sleeve, and I haven't finished the first sleeve. It takes so long. That's why I don't knit socks, because they just take so long uh, in this, this wool. So that's where I am. I'm at almost finished the first sleeve. Well, almost, I think I've another six inches to go. But there's only 72 stitches, so we're getting there. You know, patience. It's actually a lovely one to knit when, you know, you don't have to think. That's the beautiful yarn. Let's see if I can show it to you. Yeah, absolutely stunning. It's called Hills, Hillside, I think, is the name of the colorway on that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, another finished object. We have... This is one I've started, I started since I was last talking to you, so I started it on the, by, by, nearly three weeks ago, 12th of July, nearly three weeks ago, and it is the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter, Oil of Networks. So, I'm showing you the back, turn around, 
a little bit. Uh, you can see that I've used colours that are slightly different to the ones that are used in, the, in her pattern. Um, I've used a really striking red and a, um, a gold colour. She uses gold as well. But isn't this colour work just absolutely beautiful? I mean, what a beautiful design. Um, you know, Caitlin Hunter's stuff, I just can't get enough of it at the moment. I really want to keep knitting all of her stuff. So that's the bottom of the, the jumper. And there's the v-neck and these beautiful, beautiful um, cables on the, the cables on the on the raglan. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, so yeah. So I've really enjoyed knitting this for so many reasons. Partly because you just kept busy. Your mind is is I suppose occupied all the time. With these beautiful dealing with these beautiful cables raglan v-neck shaping and then you've only got a couple of inches of plain stockinette before you get to the color work so all the time there's something to to keep you interested in the project and um, i'll just show you the yarns that i'm using there so the main color is this absolutely stunning yarn let's see if i can Sorry now. There we go. So it's De Rerum Natura Ulis and it is 100% wool made in France. France. Um, and uh, it's just beautiful. There we go. I just have to try and get the hang of how to show you things close up on the screen. Um, because I'm using the webcam on my computer and my laptop. Uh, that's the main colour and that yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, really, the stitch definition on the cables is stunning. It's really toothy. It's rustic, but it's soft. It's bouncy. I'm definitely going to be knitting more with this wool. And it's not expensive either. You know, rustic wools often aren't um, and because they're not hand dyed, you know, they don't need to be. Uh, so it's, it's all good. So this is the red that I use. Now this red, unfortunately, is not showing up as deeply red as it actually is in reality. So um, just looking back, there it is. It's a really, really deep red. And there's also, even though it's a solid color, there's a lot of variation in it. So it's almost like a... Um, very not variegated at all, but what's the word? It's uh, not solid, so it's blowing out a little bit because there's too much light here. Actually, I'm realizing that this window, I might just have to find a different place to sit next time. That's the red, and then the gold is this beautiful fiber spades four ply, uh, fiber spades vivacious four ply, and the color is maple syrup. Um, so this gives such a stunning gold colour. Now this is slightly lighter, obviously it's a four ply, so it's lighter than the sport weight. The other two are sport weight. Um, so I'm hoping the colour work will settle down a little bit when it's blocked. It's just a little bit light, but um, yeah, the colours go so well together. So they're the colours for my disc out. If you've been following me, or you can see my progress on that project on my Instagram account. Well, I've actually been documenting it as I go along and I've been including a few reels of me actually doing the knitting. Uh, so yeah, that's really beautiful. Um, such, a, such an interesting project. So I've taken a break from this to go back to the, uh, the turntable pillow that the Albion and the blocking because I really want to finish that. I want to get that done. Um, and I know this won't take me long to finish. You know, it's only taken me about, well, it's been three weeks, but not full-time knitting so obviously um is there anything else i want to show you then in terms of works in progress they're the two that i have on my needles at the moment um i have another one which i haven't made any progress with at all so i'm not going to show it to you again it was the uh the one i showed you the last time um the cables cardigan so no progress on that but what i am going to show you is i decided to pull out 
a work in progress that I haven't touched for about two years. It was a lockdown project, a COVID lockdown project. And I'm going to go over here and get it. So this is something that I loved knitting on at the time, but I actually got bored with it because it's a scarf. Uh, and I think I need a little bit more interest than, you know, back and well, knitting in the round, but straight. So this is the scarf. And it is a design by Marie Wallen, except it's not exactly her design because I just looked at the picture online and I sort of made up my own one. Um, so basically the colours are all, uh, mostly they're Shetland Spindrift, uh, but I've brought in a little bit of the old Centrum. So they're sort of the leftovers that I would have had. Well, I did buy more yarn actually for it um, during lockdown. It was a sort of a treat, lockdown treat. Um, yeah. So that's it. It's just knitting around. As you can see, my uh, magic loop turn is a bit messy. So all the loose ends are still inside this scarf. So you can see that they're all they're all still loose inside. And I'm going to have to go back and pull them all and yeah, just tighten it all up. But you know, it's a really simple design. And each repeat is uh, it's only six six rows. Um, of stitches, it's very, very simple, very meditative, you know, really lovely thing to do. Um, except that there's no sleeping, so got a bit bored. There you go, it was it's a nice project, but it's been sitting in my um pile of whips for two years, it's too long. I really want to finish it and I want to use up the yarn that I have. I still have plenty leftovers of spindrift, so I'm going to put it on. Funny to think of this in the middle of summer, but it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I do love the, the look of it on me. So, and actually, you know, it doesn't really need to be too much longer. I could probably get away with, you know, another third of the length of it at the moment. So there you go. So that will clear a whip out of my collection of whips. There's a few of them, but it's not too many. Um. Is there anything else I wanted to talk to you about? I've no acquisitions. Uh, I'm not buying any new yarn at the moment because I know that I will be in it next week. Actually, I'm going to uh, the Netherlands. I'm going to visit a friend there, and um, I'm going to be in Amsterdam. So what am I going to do when I'm in Amsterdam? I'm going to go to a few yarn shops, and certainly the famous yarn shop, yarn shop in the Netherlands, Stephen and Penelope. I'm actually looking forward to seeing that shop. As you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I don't get to see yarn shops that often, but I have abstained from buying yarn online because I know I'm going to be spending money over there. So can't wait for that. And hopefully I will have footage for you of when I'm there and, you know, I'll show you around. So that should be exciting. Um, yeah, that's it really. Um, I think that's all there is for today. There isn't much much more to tell you. Um, we could just do a little bit and chat, talk about things for a few minutes before I finish up. Uh, so I'll continue on the sleeve of my um, of my lovely turntable blower. Uh, this lovely green. Oh yeah, I was going to talk to you a little bit about colours actually and how funny it is that at different times of the year I'm drawn to different colours and definitely green. Is a, is a color that I knit with in the springtime. And it's almost it's something that happens. I'm not even aware it's happening. Um, I look back, I was looking back at my notes last night to, yeah, just to prepare for this podcast. And I realized that I started this mammoth knit. It's taken me so long. I started this in March. Can you believe it? It's already July. So it just is a long-term project that's there in the background that I can pick up, you know, whenever I... Yeah, whenever I'm bored with other projects or whenever I feel I really want to finish it and wear it, because I really do want to wear it. But um, yeah, so I, this is a green project from March. You know, it's amazing. And I have I've looked back at other projects that I knit uh, in the last two years that have, it seems that springtime is green is the colour. Green is one of my favourite colours anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm drawn to knitting it in, in, in springtime. 
Uh, I'm not so much a summer knitter as you probably, I don't need to be because uh, in terms of I'm not knitting short sleeve things for really hot summer weather with lighter yarns because I don't need to because of where we are. Um, yeah, so I've been just enjoying getting out and about recently, doing some walk trail walking nearby. We have this beautiful trail called the Croke Patrick Heritage Trail. Croke Patrick, by the way, is the name of the mountain that I live beside. Um, it's very famous as a pilgrimage route, as a pilgrimage site. Um, uh, St. Patrick's the patron saint of Ireland, as you probably all know. And Croke, it took me a long time actually to figure out what that meant. Uh, it's not that obvious. Even to somebody who, I mean, we all have a smattering of Irish, apart from the few minority who actually speak it fluently and who, whose mother tongue it is. Um, we all learn it at school, but still. Anyway, the word croak escaped me until recently when I realized it's the anglicization, the English version of the word cruach. And cruach means a stack. So and mountains are often called stacks. So you have the blue stacks here. Um, and uh, yeah, so it is the stack of Patrick. And Patrick, our patron saint. But interestingly, before it actually became known as Croke Patrick, um, you know, in pagan times before the country was was Christianized in in the back in the sixth century or the fifth century, um, it was known as Cruachan Agla. So Cruachan is another version of the word Cruach, um, and Agla means eagle. So it was known as the Eagle's Mountain. Uh, so it's just another reminder that actually, you know, our whole past was, uh, our past culture, um, our indigenous culture was connected with nature, was wholly connected with uh, the land, with animals uh, around us, um, which leads me to uh, the, um, to talk to you about the upcoming festival, the Celtic festival of Lunasa. So Lunasa is um, the Irish word for August, and um, but it also is a Celtic festival that marks the end of the summer and the beginning of autumn. So this is actually happening really soon. It's happening on Monday, first of the first of August is Lunasa. So our, our autumn here in our traditional culture starts in at, at a time of the year when I always associate it as being high summer, August. But actually, when you look at nature and you look at the world around you, you realize that the things are already changing, that, that the harvest is starting, that, that the abundance of autumn has started. When I was out picking the meadow sweet this morning for my tea, um, I noticed that the blackberries have started to ripen. So, um, you know, we're going to have this huge... Um, abundance of berries and nuts, uh, wild mushrooms. I went to wild mushroom foraging with a very knowledgeable person last week. Um, you know, it's just incredible. It's all starting now, the autumn is starting. So yeah, uh, there's so much to be reminded of when we connect to ancient tradition, we're reminded of what's actually happening around us in, in nature and in the world around us. Um, and when, when we're connected to that, it just is, it's so uh, comforting and satisfying. And um, I think sometimes, you know, we get caught up in our sort of monthly calendar of, you know, school and work and forget about these things. So it's lovely to, to, to reconnect uh, to ancient tradition. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, I was out walking on the Croke Patrick Heritage Trail, which is actually is an old pilgrimage route up to the Holy Mountain. And uh, I'm going to be able to show you some footage footage of that now at the end of this podcast. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed listening to me rabbiting on about all my knitting and um, other things that are inspiring me at the moment. And thank you so much for watching. You know, it's, it's just such a pleasure for me to do this. I really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy watching and listening. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've been talking about, please feel free to comment below and ask. Um, yeah, and uh, please subscribe. It'd be great.
to have more people. Um, it's already lovely to have the people who are with me. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye.